Hi, it's Andre. Um, welcome to today's rant. Today's rant is going to be about the term spinto um, and how and what that means, um, how a person is labeled as a spinto and what it means to be a spinto. Um, this video is not about labeling artists um, personally. I'm not going to be sharing my ideas or theories uh, about who's a spinto, who's not a spinto, okay? All the information that I'm delivering to you today has come from sources, obviously on the internet. We are not using Wikipedia, um, although it does provide information uh, that is available, but if you don't check up on your facts, well, you know, that's kind of stupid. Um, so, yeah. Spinto. What is the term spinto? According to Merriam-Webster's Dictionary, which is reputable, um, a spinto is a singing voice having both lyric and dramatic qualities. Okay? What does that mean? That means that a person who is a spinto, their voice sometimes sounds like a lyric something or a dramatic something, okay? Um, yeah, that's what it means. That's according to Merriam-Webster, it is someone who has both lyric and dramatic qualities in their voice, okay? Um, spinto, the term spinto is normally applied to sopranos and tenors, although obviously you can apply it to any other voice type, but those are the most common because those are the ones that in our cultures, which are obsessed with people with higher voices, those are the ones that get famous. Um, yeah, nobody wants to hear a spinto bass, you know, unless they're a basso profundo, which is the basses that go like Barry White. Barry White is a basso profundo. Um, yeah, not every bass has a range that goes that low. The common bass only goes down to like a C2 or an E2. They don't go down to as far as like into the first octave. Okay? Um, also in like choral situations and stuff, a bass is normally only required to go down to an E2. Um, so, you know, saying that, oh, you're not a bass unless you can go into the basement, that's not true, okay? You can be a bass and only be able to go down to an E2, okay? Um, it also has to do with your timber. Um, basses have very heavy voices. Um, they can have voices that are, how should I say it? If the heaviness of your voice is, this is a tenor voice, and this is a baritone voice, basses are any voices below in weight than a baritone, okay? A regular bass may only go to here, but anything which would be like a certain level of heaviness. But anything that's even heavier than that, you're still a freaking bass, okay? Um, it's kind of open-ended as far as weight is concerned. It's the same thing when you're talking about a soprano. A soprano is a weight that's lighter than a lyric mezzo-soprano, and anything higher than that. Anything, okay? So if a lyric mezzo-soprano has a certain weight to her voice, um... Anything that's lighter than that, you're a soprano, okay? Um, I've had people call out that, you know, if, if you can't hit like a C6, you're not a soprano. Uh, no, that's not how it works, okay? It's the lightness of your voice, and in a lot of instances, it's where you're comfortable singing, but even if you're comfortable singing in like a certain range, that doesn't mean that you're that voice type, okay? Especially nowadays in popular culture where artists are expected to sing 
in three to four octave ranges. Yeah. That makes it very difficult to vocal type someone because they're saying a wide variety of notes. As far as classical music goes and as far as choral music goes, if you have a certain voice type, you sing within a certain range of notes. You do not go over that. You do not go under that. All you sing is a certain amount of notes. Your chest voice may only be required to sing two octaves, okay? For a mezzo-soprano, for example, that might be only one octave. They might only be required to sing from maybe a G3 to yeah that's not even like a full octave from like a g3 to maybe like oh no because the fourth octave's in there yeah two octaves so for a mezzo soprano maybe like an octave and a half because if you're expecting a mezzo to hit up in like an f5 that might be like the highest you can expect maybe a g5 so that's like two octaves so you can expect a mezzo soprano to sing two octaves in performance but you listen to mezzo sopranos in popular music and they're singing anywhere from like a b2 all the way up to you know the six octave okay so it's hard to vocal type somebody based on range when you're required to sing outside of your range, okay? Outside of your tessitura, which is where you're comfortable singing, you know, you're going to be singing outside of that, okay? So you develop a larger tessitura, a larger amount of space where your voice is comfortable. It should be bigger than two octaves. Um, so it's difficult to voice type that some voice type someone when say you're a soprano, but you're singing in the third octave a lot. You're singing in the third octave a lot. So people are going to be like, oh, well, they must not be a soprano. No, you're still a soprano. It's based on your vocal weight, okay? A mezzo-soprano singing in the third octave is never going to sound like a soprano that sings in the third octave because a soprano's voice is just lighter. It's lighter. You can hear it that it's lighter. Just because they sing in that range does not make them a mezzo-soprano, okay? Getting back to the point, what does this have to do with spinto? Spintos have a lyric and dramatic timbers to their voice, according also to Rosalind, Ro Rosalind Plowright, okay, who won the OBE in 2007 for contributions to music, who was the soprano, or I should say did soprano roles, then gravitated towards doing mezzo-soprano roles, and she sang as a spinto soprano for 20 years, okay? Um, she's been doing music for like the last 40 years, honestly. You know, somebody who's a reputable person in the opera industry and the music, classical music scene, um, she defined it in the Guardian, which is a UK newspaper. You can go to their website, um, theguardian.com, or sorry, theguardian.co.uk. I'm going to put the link to the article in the notes. Okay, she said that, hold on, I gotta find it. Certainly a true spinto has the voice color of the lower register i.e. a tenor sounds baritonal and a soprano sounds mezzo-ish, mezzo -ish, okay? They have an extension that allows them to sing the higher roles and that is a gift eventually in most cases taken away, okay? What that means is that a spinto sounds as far as their timber and the color of their voice, that they sound like the voice type that is below them. I.e. a soprano sounds like a mezzo-soprano. A mezzo-soprano sounds like a contralto, okay? A uh, tenor sounds like a baritone. A baritone sounds like a bass, okay? That's 
the other definition of spintel, okay? They're not mutually exclusive, okay? Um, you may run into a situation where a spinto soprano, since we're talking about, we'll just use sopranos, um, where a spinto soprano is a lyric voiced spinto soprano. She may sound like both a lyric soprano and a dramatic soprano, or she might sound like a lyric soprano and a lyric mezzo soprano, okay? So the dramaticness of their voice which is brought on by the color and the timbre of their voice, the weight of it. Dramatic sopranos have a heavier weight to their voice than a lyric soprano does. Um, or a heavier color. Uh, then a mezzo soprano has an even heavier quality to their voice, color-wise, timbre-wise, than a dramatic soprano. So the lyric soprano, who's a spinto, their voice in their lower register becomes so much more dramatic, i.e. heavy or darker, that they can be oftentimes singing a mezzo-soprano role or a dramatic soprano role, okay? That's where the Miss Plowright is saying that they sound mezzo-ish. Spencer Soprano sound mezzo-ish, okay? That is completely in line with saying that a spinto has both lyric and dramatic qualities to their voice, which also translates to they have both light and dark or light and heavy qualities to their voice, okay? That's what that means. And since Miss Plowright is famous, um, and has been doing it for a very, very, very long time, and actually singing as a spinto. So she's not someone who is of a different vocal type, who is commenting on something that has nothing to do with her physically. She is talking about something that she knows intimately, having done it herself, okay? That brings us back again to spintos, okay? There are lots of artists out there that sing outside of their vocal type, I guess you could say. Um, but if you don't have that dynamicness where your lower register is dark enough to be misconstrued as a different voice type than your upper register, you're not really a spinto. But in any case that there's that much of a difference between your upper register and your lower register, you're a spinto, okay? If you sound like a mezzo-soprano, <clears throat> but you sing soprano notes as well, you're often a spinto-soprano. If you can be mistaken as a soprano in your upper register, even if it's as a dy dramatic soprano, okay? So, if you are singing like a dramatic soprano in your upper register, and in your lower register you sound like perhaps a lyric mezzo-soprano, or a dramatic mezzo-soprano, you're a spinto. You're a spinto, okay? Um, even the slightest difference in dramaticness and lyricness of your voices, um, can define you as a spinto of that, of a spinto, that, that it can define you as a spinto, okay? Um, now you may be saying, well, so what about people who just sing like really low, but also have really high on the top part of their voice? Uh, if your tone does not change enough that people actually notice it and it isn't an effect that you're doing that your voice literally forces itself into a different tone when you try to sing in a certain way then you're not a spinto okay if your tone maintains throughout the entire time that you're singing you're not a spinto if your tone cracks not cracks changes 
enough that somebody notices you're a spent toe. Okay, now I am defined as a spent toe, okay? And so when I sing, and we're talking chest register, when I sing in my chest register, at the bottom, I sound like this. Okay, that's the bottom. If I go into my upper chest register, it sounds like this. That's not even my falsetto. That is just my chest register, okay? If you can't hear the difference in tone between those two things, I'm judging you. I'm judging you. Because there is a drastic difference in tone between my lower register and of my chest and my top register of my chest. I'm gonna do it again, just because. I cracked that. Okay, those are different, okay? My top part of my register is baritonal because I still have weight to it even though it's high. Um, my lower register is in a bass register, but I don't have the notes of a bass personally because I can't really get down to a D2 um, all that often. And a C2, very, very rarely can I get to the point where I can hit a C2. Okay? Um, that wasn't even my falsetto, which is... Okay? <laughs> so... That wasn't falsetto. That was straight up chest voice, okay? Possibly mixed voice, but that was not falsetto, which you can't really take into account when you're doing vocal typing because your falsetto or your whistle register, it's always gonna sound extremely different than what your actual voice type is, which is why counter tenors who sing exclusively in falsetto because remember, there's two different types of countertenors. There's the ones that sing exclusively in falsetto, and there are the ones that have naturally woman's tessitura and weight and color to their voices. They often sound like alt altos or mezzo-sopranos or even sopranos sometimes. Um, but the ones that sing exclusively in falsetto they're considered countertenors, and that's a proven voice type. People get labeled as countertenors who sing exclusively in falsettos, but it is a technique, okay? They have another vocal type. If they sing in their chest voice, they may be a baritone, they may be a regular tenor, they may be even a bass, but they sing exclusively in falsetto, and thus they are defined by the roles that they sing, okay? You can't be a spinto unless, a spinto soprano, unless you sing soprano notes or roles and you sing mezzo soprano roles in the classical forums, okay? If you have the, vo the voice to be able to do that and simply choose not to, you may still be considered a spinto, um, but your voice has to be of a quality that that is a possibility that you can sing mezzo-soprano roles and soprano roles, okay? You have to be able to sing two different types of roles. You don't have to sound like you're a mezzo-soprano. You don't have to sound like you're a soprano. You're somewhere in between the two of those where you're not those, but you're not far enough off that somebody's gonna say, oh, okay, well, they're a soprano singing a mezzo-soprano role. No, you need to sound almost like slightly higher than a mezzo-soprano. Slightly lighter, slightly, but still heavier than a dramatic soprano, okay? That's what you need to do. Like, mezzo-sopranos kind of cap at a certain weight on the top as far as lyricness goes. They still have a lot of frequencies that they project when they sing. The 
darkness of their voice, the weight of their voice. They project more frequencies than a soprano does. A soprano, the majority of their frequencies that they're projecting are on the top part of the frequencies. That's why they're capable of hitting all these high notes because there isn't a lot of projection in the lower frequencies to bring their notes down or to color their notes. So, yeah. So you can't mistake a mezzo-soprano for a soprano because they just don't project the same amount of frequencies. You can hear that this person is projecting more, more. It's heavier. They both they might both hit an F5, a G5, a B5. Contraltos can hit B5s. Mary J. Blige has been up there like crazy hot. But she is a contralto and you can hear it because no matter how high her voice gets, she projects in the lower frequencies. Sopranos, no matter how low they get, they project in the upper frequencies a lot like a lot more than a contralto would. They project a lot. It comes to your ears more powerfully, the upper frequencies, okay? That's just how it works. So for those of you who are unsure of what a spinto is, there are two definitions. According to Miriam Webster's, it's somebody who has both lyric and dramatic properties to their voices. According to Rosalind Plowright, a famous opera singer who's won numerous awards, played numerous venues, been famous for like 40 years. Um, it is a voice type who sounds like the voice type that is lower than theirs and is capable of singing those roles as well as the roles of their own voice type, i.e. a soprano can sing soprano and mezzo-soprano roles. That would be a spinto soprano, okay? Yeah. So don't get it twisted. Um, if you're unwilling to cite your sources or work out logically how you come to your conclusions, yeah, you can keep that shit to yourself because I don't care. I don't. Um, exchanging information is wonderful it's wonderful give me your sources okay because anyone who even in journalism you can't use yourself as a source you can't unless you have been authorized to do so i.e i have a bachelor's degree in economics so i can quote things on economics because my source is my four years of college, four plus, three plus, I don't know. Some people rush through college, some don't. That experience and the certificate authorizes me to give you information on a certain subject. In this case, it was economics. Um, if you don't have a degree, if you don't have the years of experience, as a professional, not as an amateur, as a professional, meaning you exclusively make your living on whatever it is that you do. If you're a painter or an artist, you make your living exclusively on your art, then you're a professional, okay? If you are a musician, if you make your music exclusively through, if you're a singer, singing, if you are playing an instrument through your instruments, if you make your living exclusively through composing and you're a composer, you are authorized to give information and use yourself as a source. But if you are a composer and you are giving information on singing, you're not a singer. You are not authorized to give information on singing because you're not a singer. You are not a professional singer. A professional singer, someone who teaches singing because they have a four-year degree or make their living exclusively through singing, they can offer information on singing, okay? You cannot because you just can't. It, you're not a reputable source. Um, so... Yeah, my point of that is make sure that you cite your work because otherwise it pisses me off. 
because you're just basically lobbing your opinion at somebody without anything to back it up because no offense people don't know you um and since people don't know you you aren't a reputable source you aren't cite your work okay i in this video cited my work as miriam webster's dictionary you can also go online and you can check out um ehow you can check out let's see the guardian um newspaper in the uk which has an article by rosalind plowright you can check out let's see who else you can check out um uh i lost it i had one that was from this opera website um that i can't remember the name of so there uh, <laughs> but yeah cite your work um don't just throw shit and this is very very important if you don't speak english as your native language be very careful when you are commenting in reply to people who do especially if you are how should i put this having a disagreement with them or believe them to be wrong in their statements because if you don't speak english as your natural language and you are engaging somebody who does you your lack of native english speaking m leaves you open to having a misinterpretation basically um they may mean something that is understandable to somebody who is a native english speaker whereas you not being a native in english speaker you're gonna miss the point that they're making um if not miss the majority of what they're saying because the ideas that are being construed um they're just not going to make sense to you um on paper you may be able to translate them but yeah it, it's not the same thing i would say that to anyone anywhere if you are engaging somebody who does not have the same native language as you do and even if they do if they come from an area that has a different dialect than you do where or where they have accents say in japan i know there's the tokyo dialect and then there's the country osaka dialect um you're gonna misunderstand what people say it happens to people even when you speak the same language natively if you're from different areas or if you're from different backgrounds like say you live in the ghetto um and say somebody was raised and their family had was upper class you speak different languages basically you have to be careful when you are talking to someone because you are liable to misunderstand what they were trying to say in the first place just like they may misunderstand what you were saying in the first place okay so yeah just be careful when you do that and make sure that you cite your work. I do not quote things or throw out information on stuff that I haven't read um, somewhere and I will be happy to look it up and find it for you so that the way you will know what it is um, that I'm citing. Okay, these are not my personal opinions. When it's my opinion, I will let you know, okay? Um, if it's subjective, I will let you know, especially with voices. When you're voice typing people, a lot of the times it is your opinion, especially when you run into labels like Spintos. Um, when you run into labels like um, <clears throat> First Alto and Second Alto. Um, when you run into labels like um, Blooming blooming that's not a word it doesn't make sense um even if you describe it like oh the person's voice blooms at a certain level you know or loudness or whatever 
what the hell does that mean? It doesn't mean anything, okay? Then to define it as, oh, their voice gets more clear, powerful. They sound better. Sounding better is subjective, okay? That doesn't mean anything technical. It's not a specific. Sounding better, something that sounds better to me does not necessarily sound better to you, okay? Personally, I enjoy voices of a caliber that are lyric mezzo-sopranos and lower for women. And, well, I like spinto sopranos. Um, and to clarify, the spinto soprano that I'm talking about is the singer Jojo, um, who there are lots of vocal range videos on YouTube that clarify her as a spinto soprano, okay? That's where I'm citing my spinto sopranoness from, okay? Her voice and heavier. Those are the people that I like to listen to. Sopranos, whether dramatic or lyric sopranos, they get on my fucking nerves because singing in the fifth octave all the goddamn time is irritating. And it literally hurts my ears inside um, and bothers me. It does. I, I don't care for them um, on any level. Um, as far as men's voices go, anything lower than a tenor, um, Pretty much the highest I would prefer to listen to is a Verde baritone. Anthony Hamilton is one of those. Um, that is a baritone with a high tessitura or placement for their voice that's comfortable for them. Those are the people that I want to listen to. Um, I do not personally understand why we can't respect people's voice types of all different voice types. Um, why we put so much prominence on sopranos and tenors, I don't really get because, like I said, their voices irritate me. Um, yeah. So, I hoped you enjoyed my video. Um, if you didn't, I don't care. Um, I, I really, really don't. Um, yeah. I'll leave you with get your shit together and make sure you have your information to support the things that you say. Um, otherwise, don't open your mouth, um, because you're liable to irritate someone. Probably me. Um, yeah. If you have anything else to add to this video, make your own freaking video with your own freaking information, with your own freaking citations, and post it on YouTube. That would be wonderful. Wonderful. Um... Because then I could just listen to that instead of misunderstand the things that you type. Yeah. I would enjoy not misunderstanding the things that you type. If you have the time to actually speak your theories in one go, hopefully you will be more understandable. Rather than having a 400 letter limit to get your point across. Because then you're just going to bounce back and forth between people. Seriously. Alrighty. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, and don't be ignorant.